Good morning everyone. So today you can say most important areas of uh, marketing research or for that any research right. Uh, so what is this today we are discussing about? Today we will be discussing about measurement and scaling. So the point is why is this important am I saying? Scale is important because it is one, uh, it is the method or it helps you, it provides you a way to compare between two different objects. Okay. Now, when I am saying compare between two different objects or uh, let us say the distance between from let us say A to B, let us say A to B and let us say A to C for example. Now, when I am measuring the distance, I can measure it by a standard unit called meter, kilometer or anything right. Similarly, when I am asking you your weight, you can tell me that you are uh, 50 kg, 70 kg, 60 kg or in pounds whatever it is right. So, everything has a, uh, there is a way of measuring, but what if, if I ask you how honest are you or how good are you right or let us say how nicely do you sing? Right? So, when I am asking such questions, I am putting you in a critical dilemma. You do not know how to explain because if you say something, then it would look maybe pretty high to me or it could look pretty moderate to me. Right? Suppose for example, let us say I have one award to offer and there are three people from three, people from three different fields. Let us say one person is from science, right. Now, you, you can say ki this might not be a good comparison, but so be it. We have only, we do not have an option. I have only one award. There is a musician, right, a very popular a singer maybe from a field of and a sports person, sportsman, right. Now, the question is only one award can be given out of the, uh, among these three people. Now, how do I give them? Who whom do I select, uh, as, you know, who should I select out of these three? Is this the scientist or the musician or the sports person? Whom do I select? So, when I am coming to such a uh, uh, dilemma, there is a, there I have to have something to compare. Otherwise, there is no way I can ever compare a scientist to with a musician or a sports person, right? So, to help this, this is what you face in social science, right? And this is what you face, uh, such problems you face in marketing research, right. So, let us see what exactly is happening in this. So, what is a measurement? It says measurement means assigning numbers, numbers which are symbols to characteristics of objects according to certain pre specified rules, right. Measurement of variables is a necessary requirement. Now, the variable that to be measured, now for example, I have to measure these three, uh, let us say this, I uh, will uh, say the scientist, okay, scientist, the musician, the sports person. Now, I need to measure them. Now, on what parameters will I measure is what maybe would confuse you, right. And this is a bigger dilemma in the social science, as I said, right. So, what is to be measured? How it is to be measured accurately and reliably? So, mark my, uh, mark the words like for example, you are coming into uh, play now new words are coming like reliable right? and another term that would come in the future is valid. These two terms are associated with any scale, right? any scale. Okay. So, a scale has to be reliable that means it is repeatedly giving you the same result again and again and again. So, the variation in the result is not much. The, the deviation is not there, right? And valid means it has to be the right way of collecting the uh, you know uh, the the result or the data, right? So it has to be valid. That means if you want to uh, measure how good somebody is a sports person, one of the good indicator may be might be the stamina of the sports person, right? So uh, we have to understand that. What are you? Is it a valid instrument or not, right? Some things or concepts which are inherently abstract in their nature, job satisfaction, morale of the employee, brand loyalty, 
are more difficult to measure than concepts which can be assigned a specific numerical value for example, the sales volume. Now, just imagine in engineering or in pure science or medical science you have something at least to measure right. You have done a conducted an experiment and you know this value lies between let us say 1 to 6 for example. So, 1.5, 1.2, 2.3, 2.5 whatever the value is coming you have something, but how do you associate 2.5 with a human mind? 2.5 times what does it mean in the human mind I do not understand or anybody would be confused right, but so be it you have to have a way of measuring. So, let us see what happens. <coughs> so, scale is basically a continuous spectrum it says is a continuous spectrum or series of categories and has been defined as any series of items that are arranged market progressively according to the value or magnitude right. So, this is something which is in a progression you can think of an arithmetic progression, a geometric progression whatever right. So, basically we generally we use an for example, like an arithmetic progression right. So, four scales are there, there are uh, to measure in uh, basically uh, any data we have four types of scales that are uh, possible. So, the what are the four scales? The first is the nominal scale. Now, this is a the most basic elementary scale, it means that nominal scale is something which is just to uh, identify just understand it is something to identify. Suppose for example, uh, if I talk about uh, the jersey number of players Masi has a jersey number of something let us say 5 it does not mean he is the fifth player in the team. Similarly, Ronaldo has a jersey number of 7 it does not mean anything right it is just I to identify that if it is 7 it must be Ronaldo if it is 5 then from the back if you are seeing it must be messy ok. So, nominal scales are scale which are basically to identify. So, the question is ok we will come later on one by one. The next is if you see ordinal scale ordinal right what comes to your mind when you hear the word ordinal. If I break this term if you can see that there is something called an order. So, order or rank right. So, a ordinal scale is something where you are trying to uh, order something right uh, you know uh, put something in a hierarchy uh, you know from greater than order or uh, you know um, in a descending order or an ascending order or something like that. The third scale is the interval scale ok. So, uh, ok let us see interval scale. Now, what is this interval scale? The interval scale has got a definite interval. So, let us say when you had when you identified and then you create an order let us say when you create an order of 1, 2, 3 so on. Here one thing is for sure that this is bigger than this and this is bigger than this, but you cannot say that the difference between 1 minus 2 and the difference between 2 minus 3 remains the same we cannot say that right. For example, the best player let us say is Messi for example, let us say Messi has scored let us say 300 goals right. The second best player let us say is Ronaldo right. So, when I am saying Ronaldo, uh, Ronaldo might have uh, 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 you know uh, struck 250 goals. The third player let us say I am saying is uh, uh, in my list is uh, let us say uh, Ronaldinho ok, Ronaldinho. Now, he might have been the third player, but he has scored only 180 goals. So, the difference between the first and the second, the second and the third might not be in a particular manner ok. Fourth, what is the, uh, the fourth is the ratio scale. So, the ratio scale is a scale I am writing here, the ratio scale is one which has got a little high see these are all in progressive. So, this is the most elementary then this is the second best you can say this is the third and this is the the it has it is the scale which has got all the properties with it of that means what ratio has got the properties of nominal it has got the properties of ordinal it has got the properties of interval plus its own properties. Now, what is its own property now the interval did not have a absolute 0 point absolute 0 point which 
is present in the case of ratio scale. Okay. Now, let us see. <coughs> For example, this is something like I, I have uh, asked. Now, this is something like the religious affiliation of people. right? Now, somebody is Catholic is 1, Protestant is 2, Jewish is 3, Muslim is 4, other is 5. right? So, do we mean that this is the best, this is the second best? No, not at all. It is just to code, it is to identify. So, categorical data are all the uh, you know categorical data. For example, when you are saying the uh, you know products in a store, one means let us say apparel, two means the sports item, three means let us say the grocery, these are all categorical items and all categorical items fall into the nominal category. Okay. So, we assign labels to distinguish the categories. So, let us uh, 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 some more examples are like male is one, female is two, sales zone Delhi, sales zone two is Mumbai similarly, similarly. So, the question emerges what can you do? Suppose you have got some nominal data, can you really utilize it? How would you utilize? So, this is what comes to the data analysis part, right? So, when you are talking about a nominal data, in the nominal data basically what you can do is you can create maybe percentage, right? Percentage. Now, uh, there are 20 percent uh, Jews, 35 percent Hindus, 40 percent Muslims, whatever, right? So, this is something like you do it, right? But can you do something more beyond it? We will see, let us see. So, uh, for example, let us say I want to have, uh, I want to know ki is there any connection or is there any relationship or association between the, the religion of a person and the habit of spending. Now, what I am saying is there any relationship between the religion and habit of spending, let us say versus the habit of spending. Now, this uh, thing here I have a data which is nominal in nature. So, here I can what I can do is I can do a cross tabulation, right? I can do a cross tabulation, uh, I can use a chi square test, right, to determine whether there is any association between maybe these two. Okay. So, nominal scale has their own simplicity, but they and they can be used also, right. So, now for the second question is what about the symptoms of depression from a psychiatric assessment? No symptoms, zero value, mild symptoms means less 1, moderate 2, severe 3. Now, although this is 0, 1, 2, 3, there is a difference of only 1 in each case, but in real terms does it really mean there is a 1 difference of 1? We can uh, that means can we say that my, the difference between mild and moderate is same as moderate and severe? No, we cannot say right. So, to this is something like only arranged in a order, it is a ranked right. So, this is why it is a ordinal scale where you are arranging the objects or alternatives according to their magnitude examples, ranking of players in cricket. Now, as I said, the uh, the best player could be uh, Sachin Tendulkar from India who has got 100 centuries. The second best player could be Ricky Ponting from Australia who has got 70 centuries. The third best player could be again from India Rahul Dravid, but he has got 67 centuries. So, the difference between the first and second was 30 centuries, whereas the second and third is only 3 centuries. Okay. So, the problem with ordinal scales is that the difference between the categories is hard to quantify that is excellent is better than good, but how much is excellent better we cannot say. Okay. So, the question comes is uh, what do I do when my data is in an ordinal scale? So, please remember one thing <coughs> when your data is in an ordinal scale, what can I do? I have one thing again, I can find out my, for example, let us say the median value, right? We can find the median, right? So, which is the middle point or basically simply saying the middle, middle median is the middle point. So, we can find that. We can say Ki whether uh, what is the priority or uh, most wanted thing among the uh, respondents, right? So ordinal rank, there are several uh, you know non-metric, non-parametric uh, tests which can be done. So basically, when you land up into uh, these two, <coughs> when you land up into a nominal and an ordinal data, these are basically called non-metric in nature. <coughs> non metric in nature. So, a non for a non metric uh, study you have several 
uh, you know statistical tests which are for example the man whitney u test right the man whitney then uh, the kruskal valis right the kruskal valis test right so you have rank sum test right so you have several tests and and to determine for example for example to determine the correlation between two variables which are non metric in nature you don't use the pearson uh, for example correlation you use something called as spearman's correlation spearman's correlation right which works basically on the difference between the ranks right correlation so so these are the different uh, techniques that you are using when it is a non metric so that means what the non metric data does not follow a non uh, a, a normal distribution right as good as that it could be following maybe a binomial distribution we don't know so uh, mostly it is a binomial distribution right so the next is if you see this is a case where the scale is a fahrenheit scale case the relationships are meaningful interval relationships a 10 degree difference has the same meaning anywhere along the scale that means 50 degree 50 fahrenheit or uh, 60 fahrenheit 60 minus 50 is 10 30 minus 20 is also 10 so the difference remains the 10 right so is the same but we can't say please this is important we can't say that 80 degrees is twice as hot as 40 degrees it is a relative concept it is not an absolute concept right there is no true zero only it is only an arbitrary zero you have it, there is no true zero so that is why in most of the psychology and just imagine in a case of psychology how would you say that somebody is absolutely zero in fact the truth is in nature zero does not exist 100 is so does not exist so everything lies in the universe in between 0 and 1 0 is only a value which has converged to so large an extent that you consider it zero but it is not actually zero right so and when that is in you know pure science how do you possibly explain zero and hundred or zero and one in terms of social science it is impossible right so an interval scale is a scale that not only arranges objects or alternatives according to the respective magnitudes but also distinguishes this order arrangement in equal intervals so the interval scales indicate order as in ordinal scale as I said earlier the ordinal scale has the property of nominal and itself the interval has the property of nominal ordinal and itself and ratio has the property of all the three and itself ok. So, consumer price index temperature scale interval scales are for example if I ask you how much do you like this class for example in a scale of 1 to 7. So, when I am saying in a scale of 1 to 7, 7 being the most and 1 being the let us say the lowest, I have not given an option of 0 deliberately because it is very difficult to say what is 0 means right. So, I have given you an interval in between you have to tell me 1 and 7 where is your interest lying for this class ok. As I uh, suppose I ask you your weight right, how much is your weight? Now, your weight as I said is let us say uh, 60 kg. Now, 60 kg is a point which starts from the absolute 0 right. So, from 0 to 60 similarly the uh, how much money do you have in your bank for example. Now, when I am saying suppose a 1000 rupees so that means the last point is 0 either you could have 0 no money or you could have 1000 rupees right. Similarly, all these are uh, having a 0 absolute 0 point that is why the, this is the ratio scale. Now, you can see an uh, example uh, nominal. 7, 8, 3 although the guy who has come may be first is the 7th one and the similarly ordinal now it is a rank first place, second place, third place. Interval now these are given in a scale now 9.6, 9.1, 8.2 right. So, it is a performance interval performance rating on a 0 to 10 scale. So, do not get confused with the looking at the 0 because it could, this is actually it could be an arbitrary 0 right. So, and this is then one which is the real 0 where you have right. So, time to finish in seconds is from 0 15.2 seconds 14.1 seconds and 13.4. Now, after understanding this uh, 4 scales and let me tell you what can you do when your data is in a uh, let us say when your data is in a uh, let us say uh, interval and ratio let us say the four, ratio scale right. So, when your data is in an interval or ratio scale you basically say it is a metric scale you say it is a metric scale. <coughs> so, when the data is in a metric scale automatically what happens you your 
power of analysis expands to a very large horizon or large extent. That means almost all statistical tests can be conducted when the data is in a metric scale. So, your data is uh, you can use techniques like regression, you can use techniques like for example, test of means right or you can use uh, you can use almost all the research uh, you know data analysis techniques that you can think of right. So, uh, correlation, regression, uh, factor analysis, cluster analysis everything ok. <coughs> so, now let us look at the classification of the scaling techniques. Now, scaling techniques basically on basis of that there are two basic scaling techniques ok, comparative and non-comparative right. So, uh, uh, let us see uh, what are these comparative and non-comparative. So, after understanding the measurements or the four uh, scales, then you are then we are talking about uh, classifying them, right? So, one is comparative. So, as the name suggests, you can compare between two different objects, right? And the other is non-comparative. So, you are not comparing here anything, right? So, there is no comparison in this case, and there is a comparison in this case. Now, suppose I am asking you, <coughs> what do you like? Listening to music or watching a movie right. So, I am asking you to compare right. If I ask you what do you like uh, watching a movie or watching a, a sports uh, match. So, that is a comparison you are comp I am comparing what do you like more right. So, this is something <coughs> which comes in the paired comparison. <coughs> a paired comparison basically is made to compare between pairs of objects paired comparison. So, if there are let us say five objects where I have to compare uh, let us say A, B, C, D, E. How many combinations or comparisons I will have? I will have n into n into n minus 1 divided by 2 that so that is in this case equal to 5 into 4 divided by 2 that is equal to 10. So, I will have 10 combinations. So, the problem with paired comparison is only ki that when my number of n, when my n is going on increasing, the number of combinations I will have will be much much higher and that becomes a tough criteria to a uh, tough job to do ok. Second is the rank order test, then let us uh, look at it for maybe, uh, let me go through the slides also. Comparative scales involve the direct comparison of stimulus objects right. Uh, which can be interpreted in relative terms and heavily uh, ordinal or rank order properties thus non metric ok comparative skills. In the non comparative skills so that means you can understand the first nominal and ordinal comes here right. In the non comparative skills each object is scaled independently of the others in the stimulus test. So, the resulting data are generally assumed to be interval or ratio. So, this is the metric one right <coughs> sorry. Now, com a pad comparison uh, as I am saying for example, uh, number of combinations and this is has a high use in the multi dimensional scaling where a technique where I am trying to understand ki how do people may be behave, how what do people like. For example, suppose I am asking ki how do you like a car in terms of let us say fuel efficiency and let us say price. Now, when I am saying I can place a different this is this is Ford let us say uh, Ford anything like uh, for example, Ford Mastung right. This is a uh, this is a let us say uh, Swift Maruti Swift or something. So, when I am doing it, so I am doing basically a paired comparison right. So, this is useful in techniques like multi dimensional scaling. So, as you can see two glasses are there and two drinks may be Pepsi and Cola or something or so, I do not know. So, one A versus B there is a comparison ok. Similarly, rank order scaling as you had seen from the rank order scale is like there are different brands of toothpaste and Himalaya, Colgate, AIM, you know uh, Dantkanti, uh, Dabur, Close Up, Pepsodent and you are asked to rank them. So, in one way when you are ranking also you are doing a paired comparison you rank against the others right. So, you rank Himalaya uh, in, uh, you compare Himalaya against the rest and then you compare uh, Colgate against the rest it goes on right. So, rank order is also a very important technique because it helps you to identify that among a so host of uh, objects which one is the most likelihood or which is the most liked one right the priority wise. <coughs> the third is the constant sum scaling 
Now, constant sum scaling is a method where I would give you let us say 100 uh, you 100 uh, value the value uh, a 100 you know um, 100 marks or 100 score and I ask you to divide it. Now, for example, in the case of a bathing soap, three segments of people were asked on these factors. Now, the factor mildness first segment gave a score of 8 right out of 108, second segment gave an importance of 2 only, third 4, lather 2, 4, 17, shrinkage 3, 9, 7, price 53. Now, from if you look at this when you do a constant uh, sum scale you can understand that now in this case price becomes the most dominant factor. Now, in uh, segment 1, so if a marketer wants to cater to the segment 1, he should be more careful in addressing the problem of price and the cleaning power of the detergent right. So, maybe this is an economical uh, segment right. Segment 2 is more bothered about the cleaning power and price. So, these are the moderately income group maybe right. The third group is one where lather matters and uh, moisturizing matters because they are very sensitive they do not want their uh, hand to get affected or something. So, they have given a score of moisturizing cleaning power and lather right and fragrance also. So, this is maybe an high income class or something I do not know, but I am just giving an example. <coughs> Q sort is another technique <coughs> what happens here is it is sorting Q sort the sorting is done for example, uh, let us say 50 objects or 60 objects are given to you and you are asked this to pile up into 4 groups maybe. Now, group 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, I will ask you to pile up the 60 objects into this maybe 1, 4, 3, uh, 5, 17, 19 goes on comes into group 1. If you have understood if you know what is factor analysis for example, so, we do say a similar kind of uh, technique in factor analysis we use where in this group I am compiling all the similar looking items in similarly group 2 and group 3 and group 4 and the summation of this 4 will be equal to 60 will be equal to 60 ok. <coughs> Objects should range from 60 see 7 is no sa sacrosanct number you can have 10 piles also you can have uh, 5 piles it depends on how many you want right depends on your uh, uh, how easy you feel to do that work. It should not be too many if you do too many then it becomes a very cumbersome task to uh, you know if there are 140 or 150 items even 140 is a large number, but then this is what is the uh, theoretical statement. So, if it is 140, 140 to pile up into to say 7 or 8 or 9 groups it becomes a very tough task to where to do it takes a lot of time and consume, consume a lot of time. Now, coming to the after the comparisons the comparative skills you are next moving on to the non comparative skills. So, non comparative skills are like for example, a continuous rating scale which is also referred to as a graphic rating scale that helps the respondents to place a mark. Now, for example, let us say I will ask uh, I will what I will do is I will ask somebody <coughs> ki what is uh, you know how much do you like the I am asking a farmer how much do you like a fertilizer. Now, if I am asking him in a scale let us say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 being the most liked and 1 being the less. So, least and most. So, the problem here is he might not exactly understand the real meaning of the word 4, 5 or something right. So, in such situation what happens we give them a scale in a kind of a uh, line or a uh, distance. So, th we say if this is 0 or the least let us say and this is the most ok. Tell me how much do you like it now he might look at it and graphically and things and say here. So, this fertilizer lies somewhere here another fertilizer it lies here. So, we can know if A lies here B lies here. So, they like B more than A by a margin substantial margin <coughs> sorry <coughs> continuous rating skills the, this is what you can see. Then comes the itemized rating scale this is the most utilized rating scale, <coughs> but uh, one has to be careful that in an itemized rating scale every item now suppose this is an itemized rating scale every item should be given a description ok this is what it says number of brief description if you cannot describe that particular number then how do we expect the respondent to understand it 
Suppose people would say why were five, 5 scale or a Likert scale we have uh, you have uh, uh, let me explain through this. This is called a Likert scale which is which was developed by uh, Rensis Likert where he gave a 5 response category from strongly disagree to strongly agree. Now, the question is why 5, why not 7, why not 9, why not 11? In fact, many of the researchers they are using 7 also, but when, what happens when why am, why am I not using 11? The question is when I when I use 11, how do I write? What do I write to 1? What do I write for 2? What do I write for 3? And the question is when I cannot write myself and it is my own research, how do I expect the respondent to understand that and comprehend it and then give me a reply? So, that is to one has to as a researcher one has to always fit, look you know wear the shoe of the respondent and then think accordingly. Okay. So, <coughs> then you have uh, you know for example, there are some of the questions. Uh, pantaloons sells high quality merchandise. So, this is the 2 x the score has been given here. Pantaloons has poor in store service not 2. I like shopping at pantaloons 3 right. Uh, the credit policies are terrible oh yes 4. So, here one has to also understand because there could be a question of retro you know uh, negative uh, grading also which I will be maybe handling it uh, in the next session right. So, this is all you what you do is in a uh, like at scale maybe right. The uh, next is the semantic differential. Now, semantic differential is one where there are two bipolar objectives powerful, weak, but I would always suggest please never take the this way rather you take the reverse way. Keep the weak or the negative value or the lowest value on the left hand side and the powerful value at the right hand side higher number because it is the way the human mind behaves because we always tend to have a progressive uh, attitude right. And so, when it uh, when you give such a dimension and there are 7 points in between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, these 7 points are 7 values. Now, where does it fit? So, that is what a semantic differential uses. right? The staple scale is another which which has plus 5, minus 5 and on a particular uh, variable let us say service or quality the respondent is asked to give a score. right? So, but nowadays it is uh, very uh, seldom used uh, staple scale, but though still it is theoretically uh, uh, one of the scales which is being used. So, this is all today uh, we had right. Uh, let me uh, uh, just in a nutshell brief what we did. So, we talked about uh, scale, the importance of scale and how uh, scale is useful in data analysis and then what are the types of scales basically 4 measurement scales and then we classify the scales to comparative and non-comparative and, and under comparative you have few like paired comparison, constant term, sum and all and under non-comparative where there is no comparison between the two different objects, but rather you are asking in a scale maybe of 1 to 5 ki how much do you like. Now, suppose 4 somebody says and to the next question suppose he says I like 3 automatically you understand that in a holistic way the first one is liked more than the second one. So, this is all what we did in this session. Thank you very much.